Welcome to Rowdy and Real with me, Sophie Shaw, hypnotherapist, Reiki master teacher, well-being coach, and slight loose cannon. I'll be sharing some life lessons and wisdom from the real world. If nothing else, it'll take your mind off your problems for a bit. And if we're really lucky, you might even hear something that helps you to make it better. So stick around for real talk, real growth, and some probable bad language. Let's dive in, shall we? Hi, my darling. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you here again. How are you doing today? How are you feeling? Just, I tell you what, just stop for a second and just take a moment and go inside and notice how you're feeling. Notice how your body's feeling. Notice how your emotions are. I think it's good to just take a little pause here and there throughout your day, just to check in with yourself and see what's what. Because so often we're just kind of coasting along, not really being aware of what's going on inside us. And that can lead to all sorts of issues, like just ignoring your feelings, ignoring your needs, ignoring your body's and your mind's wishes and wants. This is something that happens, I think, when you get stuck into positivity, positive psychology. And let me explain what I mean by that. If you've been trying to get past the way you're feeling, if you've been trying to move past a mood, an emotional state, a negative emotional state that you've been trying to shake off, but it just keeps coming back no matter how positive you are. And if you can't tell, I'm putting huge air quotes around that word positive. There may be a reason for that. I think that being told to be positive is sometimes about as useful as being told to calm down (laughs) or being told to smile. Oh my goodness, that makes me so mad. If somebody tells me to calm down, I just want to punch them, quite frankly. It has the opposite effect on me. It makes me feel more negative. It makes me feel more wound up. It makes me feel really pissed off, quite frankly. And it's not just because I'm a bugger, which I might be. And it's not just because I don't like being told how to feel, because who does? It's also not because it highlights and draws attention to negativity, which, by the way, it does, which creates more negativity. It's largely because it skips an important step, the feeling. It skips over the feeling that you're having and insists that you don't have that feeling because that feeling is bad and you instead have a positive feeling because only positive feelings are good. And that only leads to self-rejection, to denial, to all sorts of really unhealthy stuff. So, you know, we're told that we should feel our feelings, that we should, you know, get it all out and it's good to share But we're also told that we need to be positive and that we need to be positive in order to feel good. So which is it? You know, it's confusing. Uh, And, you know, I've said this before. I do think, much as I'm part of it, I do think the well-being industry has a lot to answer for here because it is often presented as a binary issue. Be positive or, you know, get unwanted feelings. And the truth is that real emotional inner work can be really fucking messy and difficult and ugly. And that's a hard sell. You know, it's not pretty. It it gets packaged up as pink positivity. Yay, everybody be positive in order to sell. But be positive, it just isn't enough. It isn't enough. And here's why. Lots of people use positivity as a way to avoid feeling bad. And while some law of attraction texts will tell you that's totally the point, they are missing an important step. Let's, let's be real. <laughs> Telling someone who is in genuine pain to just be positive is really unhelpful. It's totally lacking in compassion and understanding. It's actually what I call toxic positivity. And I tell you, it is not helpful and it comes from a place of fear. It comes from a place of fear of negative emotions, fear that if you feel bad, you'll create bad things. 
If you give your attention to negative emotions, you'll get more of them. Now, I want to be really, really clear here. I am not here to poop on positivity. (laughs) That would not make for a very nice podcast episode. I, I think a positive attitude is absolutely crucial. And without it, you'll keep you will keep cycling through those same painful experiences on repeat. So what is the alternative to just be positive? How can we work with this in a different way? How can we have a more compassionate view of positivity? Let me offer you some guidance. To be really useful, a positive attitude needs to be paired with other ingredients like compassion, like acceptance, like courage, like love. So we need to be brave. We need to be courageous enough to feel all our feelings, not just the pretty ones. That's that's actually, that is the only way to truly move past your feelings and into a place of genuine peace. Because what happens all too often is that people stick their negative, unpretty, unwanted emotions away behind a door. And they think, no, I'm going to keep my thoughts positive. I'm just going to get on with things. And that's going to be the best way to deal with it. And I'm telling you, that is, you know, that's your grandma's stiff upper lip repackaged for the modern world. It's not really very much different. And behind that door, All of those negative emotions, which may have started off pretty small and probably fairly easy to deal with, they just pile up. They pile up and get bigger and bigger behind that door. And eventually that door is going to give and you're going to be overwhelmed by all those negative emotions that you pushed to one side because you were being positive. We have to be compassionate. We have to be self-loving enough to accept ourselves in all our technicolor glory. And that means loving yourself, not just when you feel positive, elated, loving, generous, all those lovely things that we do get to feel. It means that you also have to love yourself when you feel vengeful and bitchy and angry and hateful. Because these are all part of the vast range of human emotions. They are all a part of you. And you have to know you are utterly lovable no matter what. No matter which emotional state you are in right now, you have to allow yourself to feel that love too. And when you can accept that you are just you're just a person, you're just a human bimbling around and doing your best like the rest of us, when you can accept that you feel whatever you feel, whatever it is, an amazing thing happens it releases. It's incredible, but it works every time if you can just say, oh, right, there I am. I'm feeling bitchy. I'm feeling judgmental. And just accept it and love yourself even though you are feeling that. And then it releases, it softens, it moves, it lightens. You know, uh, I'm going to quote my brother here, who's also an extremely talented therapist in his own right. Yes, it runs in the family. Um, He was talking about uh, the generation game. If you don't know what the generation game is, you're far younger than I am. (laughs) The generation game was a fantastic game from the 1980s where they would put all these objects on a conveyor belt and you had to kind of name them or you had to memorize them as they went past. So it would be like, you know, a cuddly toy, uh, a food processor. All these things would go past and you just name them in your mind in order to try and memorize them. Well, you can do that with your emotions. In other words, you don't have to be completely consumed by guilt or anger or envy or jealousy or any of those things. You can just simply name them. But there's my guilt. There's my anger. Oh, I'm feeling vengeful. I'm feeling jealous. I'm feeling judgmental. Just name it as if it's going past you on a conveyor belt. You don't have to get too involved with it. You just notice it, acknowledge it, accept it, maybe feel it a bit. And then it passes, you know, it whizzes by on that conveyor belt and it's gone. The thing that trips up my clients so often is the struggle to resist the feeling. That's what causes the pain. 
It's the struggle to resist the feeling that causes the pain, not the feeling itself. If you try and keep all your unpretty emotions locked inside, they're going to come out anyway. They will come out in all sorts of annoying ways. They'll leak out in like irritation, digestive issues, poor sleep. And in the long term, that is going to lead to, you know, some really unpleasant states like depression. But if you allow yourself just to feel, to acknowledge, to accept your so-called negative emotions and love yourself while you do it, that's the important ingredient. It just means that they're much less powerful and much shorter lived. This is the, the beautiful truth about this way of working with positivity. It means that you can be positive, truly positive, while you feel bad, not instead of feeling bad. You can know that it's okay to feel bad. We all do from time to time. And you can love yourself through it. Now, that is real positivity. That's true positivity, deep positivity. It's deeply compassionate. And it's, it is much easier on the nervous system, let me tell you. So, you know, what do you think? Does this make sense to you? Does it resonate with you? Have you been trying to be positive and at the same time just denying all of your feelings? Have you been so much in a rush to feel good that you tried to blow past any negative feelings and just be positive, just be positive? And, you know, how's that working out for you? So, my darling, I hope this is helpful to you. Just know it's okay to feel good, bad and indifferent and everything in between. You are wonderful in all your emotional technicolor glory. I'm sending you lots and lots of love till next time. Tra. Thanks for listening to Rowdy and Real with me, Sophie Shaw. This podcast is intended for educational and vaguely entertaining purposes and is not a replacement for counselling, psychotherapy or coaching. Please take responsibility for your mental health and ask for the help you need. You're fabulous and you deserve to be happy. If you'd like to stay in touch, then please visit norwichtherapy.co.uk and join the mailing list to receive a gorgeous free meditation straight into your inbox. And if you'd like to chat with me about your stuff, then please book yourself a free 30-minute call at sophieshaw.as.me forward slash free call. And we'll start making a plan for your happiness. Bye.